Hello and welcome to this video on solving recurrence relations using telescoping and iteration. Today we're going to solve the recurrence relation an equals an minus 1 plus 6 in two ways. First by telescoping, then by iteration, and hopefully this will help you see the, what these two techniques have in common and what their differences are. So first, let's solve this recurrence relation using telescoping. To use telescoping, we need to rewrite the recurrence relation with all the a sub something terms on one side and everything else on the other. So we'd rewrite this as a n minus a n minus 1 equals 6. Now I'm just going to write this same recurrence relation down many times with different values for n. So the first value that makes sense for n is um, when n is 1. So I would get a1 a1 minus a0 equals, well, it's always equal to 6. Next I'll plug in n equals 2. I get a2 minus a1 equals, again, 6. And then a3 minus a2 equals 6. And you can see what's going on. I'm going to keep doing this until the nth one. And the nth one would be a n minus a n minus 1 equals 6. Now the trick with telescoping is that I'm going to take all of these equations and I'm going to add them up. Now when I do that, on the right hand side I'm adding 6 plus 6 plus 6, a bunch of 6's all together. In fact I have exactly n of them in this list, so 6 plus itself n times is the same as 6n. This part's going to change depending on what your added constant, where, what this side of the equation is. These can change, right? This might depend on n, in which case it might be harder to find the sum. But in this case, just 6n. What happens on the other side? Well, notice when we're adding them up, we have a positive a1, and we also have a negative a1. When we add those up, they cancel. We have an a2, and we have a minus a2. An a3 will cancel with the negative a3 in the next term. And we just are going to keep on canceling, and we're always canceling 1 from the equation above with the negative 1 from the equation below, so a n minus 1 will go away. And that will leave us just with this negative a0 term and the positive a n. So we can rewrite this as a n minus a0 equals 6 to the n. So that tells us that the solution to this should be a n is equal to 6 n plus a 0. Now I haven't given you a 0 in this problem, so this is uh, the solution. It has a one parameter, and that parameter would be determined by any initial condition. So any initial condition I give you, you can just plug it in, and that will give you the more specific solution. Okay, well now let's see how to get this exact same thing using iteration. To use iteration, we don't have to rewrite the recurrence relation. We just start with a1 and work our way up slowly to a n, and hopefully see a pattern. So let's go ahead and do that. I will start with a1 is equal to a0 plus 6. Okay, now let's jump to a2. a2 will be equal to, well, it's equal to a1 plus 6. But instead of the a1, I'm going to replace that with what it's equal to. So if we back up a step here, instead of a1, I'm going to put a0 plus 6. And then the plus 6. So this is what a2 is. Now when I go to write down a3, a3 will be a2 plus 6, something plus 6. And that something is a2, I can write that as a0 plus 6 plus 6. And I'm going to leave it as plus 6 plus 6 instead of plus 12, so I see the pattern. One more. a4 will be equal to something plus 6. That something is a3, which I have determined already is a0 plus 6 plus 6 and then the last one plus 6. Now if I simplify this at this stage I would have a4 is equal to a0 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 6's. If I keep doing this, when I get down to a n, I will have something 
plus 6. That something is going to be an a0 plus 6 plus 6 plus bunches of plus 6s. It's the same pattern. And how many 6s do I have? Well, when I had a4, I had 4 of them. a3, there were 3 of them. So an, there should be n of them. Aha, so I see that an is equal to my a0 plus 6 times n. And there I have it again. Now, again, I, I don't know what a0 is. That's OK. Um, that's just my my parameter that would change depending on my initial condition. And in, in this example, I had to simplify the 6 plus 6 plus 6 a bunch of times, just like I did over in the telescoping. Um, and of course, when you do iteration, this last calculation, that simplification can be easy or hard. This was a particularly easy example. So, as you can see, we get the same thing both with iteration and telescoping. Uh, of course we do, they both work. And um, hopefully this has illustrated the differences and similarities between these two techniques. Alright, well thanks for watching. Hope this has helped.